Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kurt, and welcome back to Far Lands or Bust. Getting off to an early start. Creeper free, but not sheep free. Hello. <laughs> uh, dirt. I don't need cobble, even though I'm just going to pick it right back up. La -di -da. Get rid of that cobble again. Okay, anyway, um, I just as an FYI, I am recording this episode directly oh there's a creep oh my god there's a creeper g -g -g -g. <laughs> where did that guy come from ah wolfie watch out please okay um this is a bit of a situation i'm running in the wrong direction first of all all right serpentine serpentine g -g -g. okay yes i'm just going to outrun this one <laughs> nuts to him uh, haha, that's what you get. So he shows up behind me. You no longer exist. Whoa. Okay, anyway, now that we've had our panic of the day, I was about to say I'm recording this episode directly previous to the last episode. Oh. Uh, just because I have a bit of extra time here, and I like to uh, get get a few episodes out of the way, so I... Whoa, that's kind of cool. <laughs> it's like being supported by a single golem. Neat. Um, but yeah, so we're still at, uh, according to my time scale, we're still at 69% of our Far Lands Robust goal for Child's Play Charity. Um, so that might have changed in the meantime since I upload this, but... Uh, you can still go to farlandsorbust.com. Whoops, 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 to uh, to get the latest updated and uh, goal progress and contribute yourself if you'd like, and that would be much appreciated. Ah, creepers! The ones in this texture pack, I think, because they're a little bit of a darker green, they tend to blend in with the background. So maybe you guys saw that guy before he came, but I certainly didn't. craziness. So yeah, last episode I did uh, quite a lengthy segment on Minecraft news, and I should have saved some for this episode because I've got nothing else, so uh, the Minecraft news segment will be an infrequent segment <laughs> till I get my stuff figured out on how to handle these these episodes one at a time. <laughs> But what to talk about? I uh, I haven't seen last Saturday. It's it's Sunday, Labor Day weekend right now. Labor Day for us Americans, I guess. It's uh, all over the world. Don't always celebrate the same holidays. But uh, uh, last uh, yesterday, Saturday, uh, a new episode of Doctor Who came out. Um, I haven't watched it yet. I obtained it, and I'm going to be watching it probably right after this. I'm gonna fix myself some lunch. Fix myself some lunch and some lucky charms. <laughs> fix myself. Um, but, uh, oop, stuck. Um, but then I'm going to head on over and I'm going to watch it on my brand new boxy box, which, uh, for those of you who follow me on Twitter, know that I miraculously won a boxy box from uh, Groove Shark, was having a contest, uh, because now Groove Shark is available as an app on the boxy box. For those of you not familiar, Boxy um, itself is a, a set-top operating system, as in it's a... you can install it on any computer, really. I think you can also install it on Apple TV and systems like that. Uh, but it basically, it's it's an interface, an operating system, where you can you plug it into your TV so that you can sit from the couch and, you know, look at Netflix is the big thing, but they also have YouTube and other you know, apps and browsers and stuff you can use um, for basically making a, a set-top box. Which is kind of the HTCP... HCTPC... Bleh! Wait, is that... No, HT. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, HTPC. Bleh! Home theater PC kind of set up. Um, which, before this, I had an old Windows XP Pentium 4 computer set up where I could just watch Netflix on, but it really wasn't fast enough to handle 
uh, YouTube it kept stuttering on, and even uh, Hulu I couldn't watch or any other streaming channels, but uh, Netflix it worked okay with, but not with the HD stuff. Um, so I was really excited. I, I miraculously won this contest uh, to win a, a boxy box, so I, I got it in. Um, I had used Boxy previously. Like I said, you can install Boxy on... And by the way, they're not... This is just... Uh, I, I got this for free, so I'm kind of doing a little review here, I guess. I already have a boat. Um, they're not... Uh, I've not been contacted by the Groove Shark or the, the Boxy people. Anything beyond the fact that I won this little contest, so... This is unsolicited... Unsolicited... Unsolicited, uh, I'm just kind of giving a, a review for you guys, for anybody who's interested. Um, but yeah, I got it in, and I, like I said, I'd used the Boxy software before. I tried to run it on that old Pentium 4 computer, but it really didn't wasn't fast enough to, to handle it. Um, but uh, anyway, this Boxy box is a special piece of hardware that comes pre-built in, optimized for Boxy. Um, plugged it in, it started up right away. And it works really good. Uh, I'm appreciating Netflix. Netflix I can now watch in HD, which is something I wasn't able to do with the, the old PC. Uh, so that's something I've been doing a lot of. I've been started to watch Mad Men, which I never uh, really s watched before because I don't have cable. Enjoying that, certainly, and uh, other things on Netflix. Now that Netflix is splitting up their the discs from the, uh, the instant streaming, I'm just going to switch to a streaming... Thing because I have, what do I have? I have like the Green Hornet, which I know got horrible reviews, but it was in my queue. I have the Green Hornet on disc here, but it's been sitting here for like a week, so I don't even use the discs anymore. Thought that was a pig. <laughs> no, it's just a tower of clay. Let's try to go. Oh, no, let's go this way. Geek, 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 geek. Um, but yeah, I got the the boxy box set up, and like I said, it works really good for Netflix, um, but uh, it's a little buggy with everything else. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have Hulu, or even Hulu Plus, I don't think, because the Hulu people just have a disagreement, so they just block the Boxy uh, system from accessing Hulu, which is unfortunate. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's unfortunate uh, that they don't support that. They want, you know, they want to, uh, I think it's available on the Roku, uh, just the Hulu Plus they want you to play for, but uh, that's, that's kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> But whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's not available. There is... It's really cool. I mean, the YouTube works really well. I was watching some of uh, the Yogscast videos on my TV the other day. Um, but there's some other... There's a lot of apps, I guess is what they call them. But you go into an app. Say there's an app for TNT uh, or for uh, the Conan O'Brien show, which I haven't been able to watch that much because I say I don't have cable. But... Uh, they it it doesn't work you know you go to launch it and it just doesn't load it tries it basically is just opening a web browser and trying to show you the videos from the TNT website but that doesn't work and I was trying to watch the Simpsons another time it just launches the Fox website um, I got the Fox website and the little player there but I try to click play and nothing happens uh, I don't know if it's because it's trying to use the Silverlight uh, plug-in and maybe Boxy doesn't work with Silverlight Oh, this should be a good one. Oh, maybe not. But uh, that's kind of annoying. Uh, the thing I do like about it and how I'm able to watch Doctor Who is the uh, it allows you to... I'm plugged into my network here and I leave my other computer on, this computer I'm recording on right now, and I have uh, just a few shared, like my videos folder. What is going on in there? It's like a little... Uh, let me get rid of this so Wolfie doesn't hurt himself. A little bunker. Hello? Anybody home? Oh, not anymore. You're crushed under the mountains of sand. Uh, it allows you to plug into uh, your network, and then it finds all the videos in your, your network. So I can just play, and it pretty much plays any any AVI or MKV or any sort of file, because I think it, it kind of uses the VLC media player uh, as, its, as its media player, so that's kind of cool. That I like, and that's the difference between this and the Roku, I think, is the Roku has very limited network capabilities and it and it can only play certain file types so that's really cool but uh, overall if if you're looking for a set top box and either a you want you want to just have availability as if you were just on a computer you might be better off just getting one of either having an old computer and plugging it into your TV or you might be better off 
getting, uh, I know Dell, I was thinking about the Zino, Zeno are kind of set-top small computers that you can, that they're kind of meant for that, even though they're Windows 7. Uh, but yeah, that might be better for you. Or if you're looking for just something simple to run Netflix, you know, that's it. Uh, you might be better served by the Roku box, which is, you know, I think they came out with a new version that's, only 60, 80 bucks or something like that. But uh, uh, the boxy system might, uh, if you do have like a computer hooked up to your TV, you might want to just install the boxy system as an application. And it's kind of a, a convenient way to to run things. Oh, shoot. Nope, not over there. <laughs> Would be kind of a convenient way to run, run things from your computer. God, where am I going to make a hidey hole? This will work. Wolfie, you bum, get over here. God damn it, fine then, run around, how do I care? Uh, yeah, it might be kind of a cool system to set up if you want to kind of optimize your viewing experience from the couch without having to deal with the full, you know, operating system in your way. Uh, but then also, being as you're on a computer, if, if you do want to watch Hulu or some other random web-based video, you can just pop back into your, your whatever operating system you have and run it from there. Um, but the boxy box, I can't uh, completely recommend, uh, just because I think it is like a $200 or 175 or something like that. Obviously, if, if you win it in a contest like me, hey, whatever, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I off the top of my head wouldn't if I'm trying to be a, a professional reviewer here, it uh, I wouldn't re recommend it for for the home user or the advanced user. Might be a little bit. Why did I just make a boat? I'm an idiot. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, recommend it completely that way. But uh, I'm certainly appreciative of the people at uh, Groove Shark for sending it to me. The ah oh, son of a. <laughs> <laughs> I'm distracted. See what I tried. What happens when I try to be a proper vlogger here with the reviews and podcast quality content? I get all confused with Fire Lands or Bust, and then I start making boats and dropping beds and all sorts of shenanigans. Uh, but yeah, what was I saying? The uh, the Groove Shark app certainly works fine. Uh, it's not as fully featured as the God, there we go the web app. Hold on, let me go to sleep. Why are cactus blocks always bigger than the other blocks? That's just floatingness. Giant cactus cube. And awakeness. Boop boop boop. Ah, Wolfie was fine, just wandering around on his own. Whoop! Oh, how you doing, Creeper? Uh, you got another friend over there, unless it's a cactus. Um, shoot, now he's going the way I want to go. Damn it. You know what? I'm going to snipe you. Boosh! Or not. I'll just... Uh, forget I had that arrow and continue on. <laughs> I know, cow, it's dramatic. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, that, uh, like I said, I, I, I appreciate winning that contest. It was certainly fun and an excitement, but uh, and I'll, I'll keep using the boxy box just because it works with Netflix better than my computer did, but uh, yeah, so that is the end of my little review. <laughs> Ah, yes. What else can I talk about? I'll answer some questions here. I know two episodes ago, I think it was episode 72, I was kind of, uh, I felt off, certainly, about the way the, the episode was going. But a lot of you guys said you certainly enjoyed it. Um, I don't know. Something, something about uh, the way I ended that episode. I was talking about my job and the, uh, you know, finding a career you like and whatnot, that kind of got me in a weird mood, so I kind of, I think I applied that to the entire episode, and I'm like, well, this entire episode was a downer, and I hate it. But I'm glad it was an enjoyable episode, regardless. Um, but, yeah. Continuing along, I guess, with that thought, uh, I got a question, a rather large question, which is why I'm starting so early. 
they asked, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, what is your biggest ambition in life? Whoa, <laughs> what is your wildest dream? I'm not picking these up, am I? Ah, these cookies are taking up too much space. What can I get rid of? Dirt. And some flint. Bink. Okay. Um, well, as you know, I, I recently quit my job as a web designer, so certainly web design isn't my, my biggest dream or ambition. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it. I'll say this a million times again. If it's something you want to get into, it's certainly uh, an interesting and growing field. And if you're you're an expert at it, you're very good at what you do, it's certainly something worthwhile. But uh, uh, as you know, I want to um, go back to school for geology I'm thinking about. It's always been an interest of mine, and, uh, wow! Was that Wolfie, or was that just my own stupidity? I think it was my own stupidity. It was my best impression of Wolfie. Um, geology, and uh, more specifically, planetary geology, not quite astronomy, um, but this is kind of a more specific thing. Um, for those of you, and I'm not sure how, in what uh, capacity, you know, I would get a degree. I can't personally see myself getting a doctorate or a PhD, even though that's kind of, when you go into the sciences, it's kind of the the agreed upon thing. Oh, you have to get a PhD in order to become a professor and then you can fund your own research and blah, 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 blah. But I don't know, that to, doesn't really appeal to me. Um, certainly I recognize that I would have to probably get a master's degree and uh, I'm really, the thing I'm really interested in is field work. You know, going out and actually studying, you know, things in the real world and getting your hands dirty and sure, I know then you have to collect samples and bring them back to the lab and do the boring paperwork and proposals and things like that. Yeah, I understand that's part of it, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't even know if it's possible. I'm sure, you know, the full time, you know, the people with the PhDs doing the actual, the actual studies and the science need people to go out and either help them or you know, assist them in their field work, so that's certainly the kind of situation I'd like to be involved in. There's actually, and I should have looked up the name of this, um, let me, uh, yeah, let me do that. Let me get out to this peninsula here so I'm kind of safe. Then I'm going to pause it really quick, but it will be completely seamless, seamless transition. Whoa, what the? <laughs> dropping your sword for no reason. I just got so excited, I'm dropping my, my utensils here. So, uh, hold on a second, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and Wolfie is having a bath. But uh, yeah, I looked it up, and I would uh, something going into geology. I'd be really interested in is there's this program called ANSMET. It's called uh, the Antarctic Search for Meteorites. Um, it's kind of a project from National Science Foundation. Uh, but anyway, they go down to Antarctica, yeah. obviously, uh, with a team uh, to recover meteorites, and they go to Antarctica because it's very easy. Uh, to see, it's not that meteorites fall more often in Antarctica or anything, it's just because Antarctica is covered in, you know, snow, white snow, it's pretty much untouched um, by, you know, either human forces or other, you know, natural forces too bad that it's easy to find meteorites that fall down there because meteorites are commonly black and the snow is all white, so it's, it's really easy to find meteorites there, and they've apparently found to date, they've been doing this for years, but the, up to date, they've recovered over 10,000, you know, pieces of meteorites that then they can take back and study different things like that. So uh, uh, that's something I would like to do. They go there, I believe, for 90 days, where they, 90 or it might be 30 days. I'm sure there's different amounts, but uh, they're there for quite a while. They live, you know, in tents uh, in the middle of the Antarctic, uh, not too much uh, contact with the outside world, uh, but they're just there. Uh, in Antarctica collecting meteorites um, and obviously the people they do take with there's a selection process and you have to have some sort of connection you can't just be Joe Blow off the street you know I want to search for meteorites in Antarctica you have to have some sort of training and uh, you know either it coincides with your school or thesis or whatever but uh, yeah I mean professors PhD people go down there master's students and uh, you know, obviously geology is a big thing, so that, I mean, that would be really cool. I mean, that would be like the ultimate field school for if I'm, you know, going to 
be able to go through with this geology school program thing. Um, I mean, it's pretty much the closest you can be to, you know, being on another planet is going to Antarctica and living there uh, for six months or however many days they stay there. Uh, not six months, six weeks or something like that. But uh, I'll put a link to their website, which needs to be redesigned. Maybe I can do that for them and then they'll take me with. But uh, yeah, it's like a GeoCities site. But uh, uh, yeah, it's called uh, the Antarctic Search for Meteorites. So that could definitely be high on the list of my ultimate goals um, to do something like that. Uh, that would be pretty amazing. Um, and, you know, just in terms of the what I would like to do in geology is kind of study that sort of stuff. Meteorites. Uh, we had a, a guy come in, and I forgot his name already, but uh, to our uh, astronomy club. We get a lot of, you know, professional astronomers come into our astronomy club to give talks during our meetings. And one of them was talking about things known as pre-solar grains. And they're basically little particles that they find in meteorites and fragments, comet fragments and things like that. Uh, they're little particles. I think it's one per one million parts of meteorites that they have are these pre-solar grains and they've basically been unaffected by the solar system or our sun. Basically when our solar system, our sun ignited, uh, it, it kind of changed the properties of all the dust and matter that was within it and it kind of erased the history of that matter but these pre-solar grains are unaffected by that and they still hold the properties and clues as to where they came from before our solar system existed. Uh, so they uh, can actually trace these things back to the early supernovas and nebulas and, you know, basically the, the stars that died and exploded and then their gas ended up turning into the leftovers and remnants and collapsing into our solar system and they make up our bodies and, you know, all the atoms in our bodies and the earth and the desk and this mouse and, you know, and the little computer chips that's running Minecraft right now, so... It's it's kind of finding the origins of the solar system. So that really piqued my interest, and that was like, whoa, I'd, that would be something really cool to study. Um, but there's a lot of chemistry involved in that, too, because you got to find out about, you know, only this certain isotope or this certain atom is only found in supernovas. You know, you, you can only get this certain amount of iron in this kind of supernova and stuff like that, but it's really cool. Um, so that's kind of why I like the idea of studying meteorites and things like that. And of course, if we're going to be talking about ultimate, super awesome lifetime dream goals, would be to, you know, it would be to go to space, you know, be an astronaut, you know, who, obviously, you're talking to me here. Um, I'm the guy who said I would sign up for a one-way trip to Mars. <laughs> but, uh, whoop. Oh, have to do this. Whee. Um, so, yeah, and I know one of the missions they're speaking, thinking of, now that they've they're looking more towards deep space exploration instead of uh, low Earth orbit is visiting a near-Earth asteroid and studying that and bringing back samples. Uh, so that would be ultimately awesome. But I know in, in the front of my head, I know that for me, that's pretty much completely out of the question. I'm pretty, even though I'm only 29 at the moment, it's pretty late in the game to be starting to decide, uh, I want to be an astronaut, you know. Um, at the end of high school, I was considering joining the Air Force, which certainly would have helped. Uh, a lot of astronauts are ex or current Air Force or Navy, uh, whether or not they be pilots or just God damn it, Wolfie, sit down. Uh, I had considered that, but uh, not having done that, uh, you know, it's not going to help me out any. So I, you know, ultimate dream, yes, that would be absolutely awesome and excellent, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, but uh, just being able to, if I'm able to pull myself up by the bootstraps and uh, go back to school for, what did I just do? Go back to school for geology and then uh, maybe get a master's degree and being able to do this AMSMET thing, the search for meteorites in Antarctica would be absolutely amazing. Uh, so yeah, that was a pretty weighty question there, sir or madam, whoever asked that. Um, but uh, yeah. That, uh, that is me in a nutshell, and I'm sure I'll have more of stuff like that to talk about in the future. I didn't uh, touch on nearly all of my life dreams and goals and aspirations. Uh, so yeah, in the comments here, why not uh, share with me your certain dreams and goals? I know a lot of you are 
a little bit younger than me, so you have a, a lot more time to, to think about that stuff, and certainly a little bit more flexibility before you guys go to school or figure out what you want to do to decide your dreams and aspirations, so yay, stuff like that. <laughs> but anyway, um, let me make a boat here. God, these cookies, I'm really pissed off that I made these cookies. <laughs> They're taking up a lot of space. Um, what can I get rid of? I can't really get rid of anything. Wolf, yeah, I know Wolfie. I can get rid of a water bucket, I guess, but... Anyway, I'll just break the bench. Get on with my life. Uh, yeah, what was I saying? End of the episode here. Uh, thank you for joining me. Certainly, continue going to farlandsorbust.com to contribute. What can I get rid of? I guess a single pork chop. No. Anyway, like I was saying, farlandsorbust.com, where you can continue to continue to contribute to our Child's Play fundraiser. Like I said, we're right now 69%. I'll put a link in the video description so you can go right to farlandsorbust.com to contribute. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, but yes, certainly like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more crazy hijinks like this. And my name is Kurt. I will see you next time.